Welcome to the Green Wisdom Health Podcast with Dr. Stephen and Janet Lewis, where you will learn about natural solutions to common ailments. And now, here are your hosts, Dr. Stephen and Janet Lewis. Hello and welcome to this week's show. I'm Janet Lewis. And I'm Dr. Lewis. And we are Green Wisdom Health, home of your low-cost lab work, here to bring you a interesting show on an interesting topic called aging gracefully we're all going to do it some of us are going to do it better than others and we're here to help you be one of the one that does it better than others so we're going to help you do it with health and grace so dr lewis is going to educate us a little bit today about (laughs) what can we do to slow this process down or at least look good doing it (laughs) She said, everybody's going to do it. I'm thinking about aging or being graceful. It's like, well, uh, we do get this, uh, these questions a lot. And we do sell a lot of products based on a person's uh, vanity. Is that the right word? People Obviously, they have whole stores built on people's (coughs) vanity. So, oh, uh, oh, yeah. Okay. Sorry. And she just got out of one about an hour ago. <laughs> and that great stuff. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm going to throw a lot of information out here, and I, I appreciate the fact that some people seem to put it together, or, or at least they'll ask questions. Well, you said this, and what does that mean? And I'm real okay with that. That's why I really prefer that people join the Shooting Straight with Dr. Lewis and ask questions. So I appreciate the questions that we got here recently. So I, here I go, rambling down the rabbit trail. Um there's something called cytokines that are actually cell messengers, but if you get high cytokines and your body doesn't know how to deal with them, uh, those are the ones that can turn into and disrupt uh, cell production or reproduction. And they say they, a lot of those big entities say that has a lot to do with uh, getting um, cancer. You know, skin care goes back several thousand years, you know, back whenever the queens uh, lived, you know, like Cleopatra was, she was bathing in milk and honey with fresh fruits. And actually, that's probably a smart thing to do because they would have the antioxidants in them. And of course, I'm a big fan of honey since I'm a beekeeper. I, I hope I'll go check my eight hives tomorrow, maybe. Uh, chamomile's a good one. Um but you got to realize you've got different types of nervous systems. And the autonomic nervous system, uh, it, it also regulates things like breathing, the heart pumping. But there's a positive and negative things that work together. You know, this speeds up, this slows down to, to bring about balance. And one of the things that you hear, Janet, and I talk about a lot is estrogens. Um a lady yesterday from Illinois asked me about estrogen. Her doctor wanted to put her on estrogen. And I said, well, I'm not an MD. I personally think with what's going on, you can do it in a small dose and we can keep it from becoming a bad thing. And that's partly through probiotics, which I'm going to get into with another question later. Um, estrogen is very, very dangerous, but it's if you don't watch it, it's kind of like a pig in a parking lot. It takes up a lot of space and never leaves. Uh uh, you know, it's a good thing men have a little bit of estrogen or we'd become werewolves with the way we look, too, and grow way, way too much uh, hair. Uh, but the skin care has been around for thousands of years. Um, some of the herbs in skin care, I'm just going to go through a few of them, is aloe vera, black tea, green tea, borage oil is a really, really good one. Comfrey, I know there's a little bit of com- uh, controversy about comfrey being toxic. My idea is no, 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 and you should probably grow some of that stuff in your backyard. Grape seed extract, uh, ginkgo's good, licorice root, uh, vitamin C and white willow bark is, you know, a really good thing. Uh, There's another question that's going to come up later that we're going to go over. But if you wake up at night, probably what happens, you burned up your blood sugar and you wake up, then you get what? happens is your adrenal glands are are stimulated and they need to dump the matrix, which actually means that you kind of got to get rid of some of your toxins because we've talked about sleep before. And usually that's because I can't stay asleep because your body's really toxic. So when I have trouble sleeping, uh, there are different things you can do to detox and you can, you know, shoot me a 
a message on shooting straight with Dr. Lewis or an email, and I'll tell you more personal stuff. But Janet hands me massive amounts of probiotics because that decreases the cytokines, which are the cell messengers. Um, <clears throat> there's uh, the toxic waste that I talk about. It kind of stores in the blood if you're not having all those detox pathways going on. And it'll also, in a bad way, affect your hair, skin, and nails. And Janet's going to talk about that here sometime in the podcast, too. Hair, skin, and nails is pretty important. And if your hair, skin, and nails begin to go downhill, that's a really good first sign of something's not happening. It's not healthy. Uh, because each and every cell has a thyroid receptor, and it has to be in balance in order to communicate. And that goes back to the autonomic regulatory system, the communication there. Um, I think that's interesting. Can I just throw my two cents in here? You can throw in $20 and take me to lunch. <laughs> oh, sorry. Your nails. You know, there's a lot of girls, young girls, including myself, that when... Young. She's young. Right. Well, I, well, at one point, um, <laughs> the nails would peel and split even when you were in high school. Um, but what I've noticed is now that I'm healthier, I have strong nails. So you're saying, you know, your nails are a good indicator and you're yes. thinking, well, you have to be old for it to start not being good. But you can actually start off not being good young. We're getting worse genetics because of the bad food. And, you know, that's why I keep telling people, write your congressmen, senators, whoever those buffoons are that so-called govern us, and talk to them about food safety. Talk to them about quit spraying that glyphosate or Roundup on it. Quit genetically modifying this stuff. Uh, Another thing, well, we talk about hair, skin, and nails. Janet's talking about nails more specifically, but wrinkles. Wrinkles really and truly are about uh, something called glycation. It's advanced glycation, which that goes along with the metabolic syndrome slash heading toward diabetes. You've got more rusting going on than polishing. Uh, Now Janet's looking to see if she has wrinkles. I don't have any wrinkles. No, she really looks good for 30. I got good genetics. (laughs) No, it's, yeah, (laughs) genetics does play a part in it, but you can control I shouldn't say control. You can greatly influence your genetics with nutrition, even in the uh, subject of cancer, which we'll get into one of these days. But if you start wrinkling, you've got a lot more things breaking down. Um, Your defenses are neutrophils and lymphocytes, types of white blood cells. And that's one thing Janet and I always uh, look at. Uh, People with lower cortisol usually have lower stress or less oxidation or glycation, and it's lower cortisol to a point, and those people have better hair, skin, and nails. But then you can get it really low with your cortisol, and your hair and your hair is going to fall out, and so will your nails. Yeah. Because that's what happens when you're overstressed. And I'd like to say something about teeth. Because your teeth and gums have got a lot to do with your your health as well. Absolutely. And that's a beauty thing. Is this part of our beauty show, Cosmetics, Your Teeth? Hey, you're the boss. <laughs> Whatever you say. Well, I just had a great story, and I'm pretty excited about it. Um, you know, I've told many of y'all, y'all, you know, you've heard my train stories and our digestive issues ourselves. And because of the bad or poor digestion that I had many years um, my gum health in my mouth was bad. My gums would bleed. Uh, I have beautiful teeth, but uh, I actually had one that just, when I was about 25, it just fell out. I was chewing a piece of gum and the whole tooth just fell out and my teeth looked great. Um, so there was a core issue there with gum health. And um, it got to the point that I was going to the dentist every three months and I guess the icing on the cake for that was whenever, you know, because I've got really pretty white teeth. Um, I had bacteria, I guess, in my <laughs> gums, and the dentist decided to put some blue dye in there to kill it. Well, when she did that, my teeth turned blue, and they were blue for like two days. And at that point, I thought, something's, this is, this can't happen. I can't do this. And so um, we started really, really working more on, you know, like the... uh 
We use the hydrogen peroxide with some really great mouthwash. We talk about the periobiotic toothpaste that we carry that has the uh, the great probiotic in it for gum health. And then um, things started getting better. And I started doing a lot of the digestive enzymes like Panplex and things that calm down gut. And it got to where, okay, she let me go six months. Well, the teeth cleaning was still abusive when you got down there, but I did not have to do the dye anymore and things were holding their own. Well, I just got back from the dentist today. I'd been on a six-month reprieve, and um, she went in to clean my teeth, and she said, uh, you don't even have any plaque at all, because I said, that has got to be the smoothest teeth cleaning I've ever had in my life. And um, she said, what are you doing? She said, your teeth, are they look great. Your gums are great. They're not bleeding. They're, they're light pink like they should be. And I traced it back, and about four months ago, I guess we've got that product we keep telling you all about called SBI Protect that's been a godsend uh, for many people with gut problems. because yeah, it Immune actually, problems, too. Yeah, and mm-hmm. autoimmune problems. Yeah. It, it actually goes in and, and uh, heals the gut over time, and it takes it right at about three months to work. So when you think, hey, I don't really feel anything, you don't really have to feel anything with this. It's just working. And that is what we have traced it back to that has actually repaired my gut to the point that my teeth are good and my gums are good. And we have something physical on the outside that we can see now that it works. So when you're talking about health and beauty, you've got to repair gut leakiness as well to make all of those things look better on the outside, correct? Yeah, and I just talked to one uh, a lady that went to school with Janet, um, and she says, well, can you, do you think this lab re- relates to my GI tract? Because I'm reading it's all in the gut. And I said, absolutely. But you, people are beginning to get that. And then I had another uh, patient this morning that came in. She says, well, I saw this show called The Second Brain. I said, I've got the book. I've read it. She says, really, the gut has more influence, more fibers going to the brain than the brain has going to the gut. I said, yeah, guess what that means? That means which one controls who. But, you know, there's a lot that you can do to put it together. For for example, mandatory factors for beautiful hair, skin, and nails is low cortisol, but not too low. Uh, we have the different adrenal support supplements. And keep stress to a minimum. Stress is not always what happens to you, but it's your reaction to it uh, in a big way. Glucose levels have to be stable and not fluctuate wildly. You know, we'll talk about at different times diabetes, metabolic syndrome, and obesity. Insulin levels have to be low. On our labs, they should be about a 2 to a 7, even though the range says 2 to 19.6, but that doesn't reflect normal. That reflects what America is. And Jay Leno was talking about obesity decades ago and making jokes about it, which it's no joke. You know, it's it's really serious. Uh, but you have to have enough vitamins and minerals. And I don't care how organic you eat. You're not getting enough vitamins and minerals. And if you're eating junk food or stuff that's prepared, you're certainly not. You you need to shop around the edges of the grocery store. Just get the produce, basically, and the you know good meat. Uh, you have to have enough protein intake daily and sometimes i'll tell people well your protein's low in your lab and they said well i'll eat more of it i said that's not the point the point is you're not really digesting it so when you eat protein and it i think the formula is a 0.36 times your weight in pounds equals how many grams a day that you should have then you have to have proper blood flow and the blood flow is impaired greatly if you have those wild glucose or insulin swings Uh, And that's one reason why people get high blood pressure. But if you do those mandatory factors, it takes three months minimum for the first follicle of the hair to grow. Um, You know, your body kind of responds depending on whether you have allergies. I've been uh, agitated ever since I did a test and found out that things I'm sensitive to are three things I love the most in life. Uh, and the allergies and inflammation. Janet kind of has a smirk over there. I'm sure that's not directed at me. Uh, no, that's why I won't do that test, because I think that, well, I take half, well, probably three-fourths of the store already. <laughs> thing. I don't need to hear one more thing that's wrong with me, and I can't have. So, And it's great for people that really can't get to the root of problems and want to know more, but it's very depressing now because now you th- 
now? Is it because you ate so much of that that you're allergic to it? Or, you know, we don't, we don't know. Well, what that means is Janet is not going to do guilt and she doesn't want to do anything different. <laughs> Uh, and again, uh, you heard me say it just a few minutes ago. Estrogen's the pig in the parking lot that ties up parking spaces and never leaves. Estrogen's made in the fat cells, whether you're male or female. Estrogen's, you get them from plastics, pesticides, from your carpet, from building materials. Uh, it outgasses from the carpet. You get uh, fire retardants off your pillows and mattresses, and et cetera, et cetera. They act like estrogen. So, folks... Uh, you kind of need to cut the estrogen down, and we know how to do that. And there are things that you can take that help your body adapt to the stress, and hopefully you don't have a bad mental response to it. Ashwagandha is one of them. I really like that. But let's talk for just a minute about things that's really, really important. You know, the middle layer of the skin is called the dermis. Uh, That's kind of the support bridge that keeps the skin pretty, uh, decreases inflammation. The best thing you can do for that is something called collagen. It's the type 1, type 2. This is so good. Of course, I sell it to people that have bad backs because as it gathers up water, it's hydroscopic, then it lubricates. It's like putting grease into the ball joint, so to speak. And this has the good magnesium, vitamin C. It has enough protein, but it has something called Gelatine hydrosylate, which is Fortigel, that's a registered trademark. Then it's got the Tendo Active. Then it has the Mobile. These are the well researched uh, things. It's called collagen. And that stuff not only helps your skin, nails, and hair, <coughs> but it helps you with mobility. It helps. It's like putting WD 40 in your joints. I can work harder, and my back does not kill me. My back kills me just because of an old gunshot wound a long time ago, but accidental. But. <laughs> And a story for another day. <laughs> yeah, I tell people, I did shoot a man when I was 24, and they go, oh, my God. And that's the problem with some of these advertisements. They only tell you part of the truth. But the truth is, yes, I did shoot a man when I was 24. The real part of the truth is it was me, and it was an accident. I dropped a pistol, and it went off. So the moral of the story is don't carry cheap pistols. Don't drop them. But the dermis, the middle skin layer, contains hyaluronic acid. And that's a large, very, it's a sugar-like compound called glycosaminoglycans, G-A-G for short. And that retains the water. And that's why it puffs up and makes the wrinkles uh, more shallow. And when you're more dehydrated, you'll notice that the wrinkles get worse. So that that collagen is a really, really incredible thing. Uh, Janet has one that she likes that I've not actually tried. I do the collagen every day, though. Well, this one actually helps your nails grow and your hair grow and your eyebrows grow, um, which a lot of women have problems with and, like, they don't have a whole eyebrow. Um this one's called Cosmetics, and it's got, you ladies out there probably heard of biotin. Well, it has 500 micrograms of biotin in it, but it also has... Uh, it's the free-form, very absorbable stuff. Yeah, it has MSM, horsetail, saw palmetto, stinging nettles, um, a faux tea root, and paba, which is one of the... Paramino butyric acid. Yeah, okay. And hydrochloric, betaine hydrochloric, so that you can break it down and absorb it in the gut. Um, and it's also got uh, quite a lot of B12 and folate. So it's it's really good at helping grow nails. You know, when I was up at the beauty store today, I saw that there were things you could put on your fingernails to make them grow. And they're trying to give you the nutrients on top of your nails. So why don't you take it internally so the whole body has it and then the nails will just grow? Yeah, I started to name this podcast Beauty Comes from the Inside Out, but we didn't get around to that. So, you know, when you get a disease or premature aging, what that is is the ability of the matrix of the cell to flush and control the free radicals. And that's why nutrition is absolutely incredible and and totally important. And then you've got to have uh, fresh, clean water to help with that, too. Um, pH balance, you know, there's a lot of, uh, misinformation about, uh, pH, but 
the main thing is you have to keep your body more alkaline. So anytime you drink water, you need to put lemon or lime in it. And Janet and I do that. We do it with beer, too. People look at me and say, I want this with a lime. They look at me funny. I said, it alkalizes the body while I sin. So pH of the skin is very important, but you need to start from the inside out. Uh, it does help lose weight, and those things that create acidic conditions and cause you to age uh, very prematurely is the acid-forming foods, poor diet, stress, uh, coffee. Oh, geez, I wish I hadn't said that. Coffee and alcohol, smoking chemicals that you're full of anyway, dehydration. We talked about parasites, which is usually yeast, but can be worse than that. Uh, constipation and poor bowel health. Um Overweight people that have excess acid, you've got to understand that's storing your fat cells and it's you have a very difficult time losing weight, like you eat very little but keep gaining. Yes, it's because it's so acidic, the body's reluctant to get rid of that extra acid and dump it out because your body's already not detoxing. So you can't really lose weight until you do lots of alkaline foods like green foods, grapefruit seed, grape juice, um, you know, the things that most of us don't eat enough, and it's like dark leafy greens, artichokes, beets, broccoli, carrots, cucumbers, dandelion greens, green beans, red cabbage, spinach, squash, capsicum, yams, zucchini, almonds, lemons and limes, even in your beer, apple cider vinegar, which I'm not a big fan of. It works, but it tastes yucky. Chlorophyll. So keep doing more and more of those, and you will lose weight, but you've got to get the pH to alkaline it, and then your hair, skin, and nails get a lot better. And I tell people, dying's not a sin. I just want to be a really pretty corpse at a real old age when I get there. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, we do have a few questions today as well before we get back to more about beauty, which I know Dr. Lewis has more information, but um, we do want to make sure we have addressed these questions because they were very important things. Um, we have a couple of people that were asking about sleeping. You know, sleeping's got to do with whether or not you look good the next day, whether or not you have enough or not. And if you don't have enough, you don't look so great. You look a little bit tired and then you don't look too pretty. So we have a couple of people that say they're waking up at 5 a.m. And they're lucky to get to sleep till 6.30. Well, is that a sign of being old or is that... That, that, well, that, that James comes, did not ask that, but I'm asking is that, that a sign? That comes from James, and then Joe up in Saline, Michigan, uh, piped in. Uh, James said he's waking up at 5, but if he gets lucky, he sleeps till 6.30. And I said, so the question is about getting lucky. Well, if getting lucky means you sleep till 6.30, then get lucky every night. I'm not sure that's how he meant it, but... Uh, the body has a clock, a biological body clock, and 5 a.m., uh, the meridian is... I'm guessing the colon. It's It goes from 5 to 7. But so, it depends upon if you're in daylight savings time. So is it respiratory or is it colon? That's always the question because mm -hmm. lungs are like 3 a.m. to 5 a.m. So it may be you're trying to get rid of the acidity and you do that through the lungs too. Uh, and it could be the next meridian is 5 to 7 a.m. And that's colon. So I personally think y'all should talk about cleansing. Uh, I, I'm going with colon, colon because yeah. if he's can only sleep till six thirty, then that means he's more in the meridian of the colon. Yeah, meridian. So make sure your trains are moving through during the daytime, every thirty minutes to an hour after a meal. So if it's not doing that, then you need to expedite your train so that you'll sleep through the night and your colon won't be nagging you at that time of day and i'm going to tell you a little bit more about uh probiotics when she asked the question that that uh, well maggie was, was saying about keto and she's having trouble staying on keto and i think keto is probably the best diet for most people you know the atkins primal paleo keto uh, maggie said she has all those cravings and then tara piped in and says well you probably need to eat more fat, which I do agree with. But the key to cleaning the colon and to stopping a lot of the cravings is to get enough probiotics in your system. Folks, it's not as easy as taking a probiotic or eating yogurt. Most yogurts you shouldn't eat anyway. Um, 
because most probiotics, it takes a lot of them in a long time to get it established in the GI tract because of the toxins. And, you know, even if you don't drink chlorinated water, you're showering in it. So let me talk about probiotics, which would help with the colon, help you sleep longer, help you sleep more peacefully. Because when I get agitated and irritated, Janet gives me one of the holy God, really big probiotics that... I normally wouldn't take because it costs too much. And and you do sleep good every time I give you those. You sleep like a baby. Yeah, I really do because they help decrease uh, the toxins there. But here's here here's the thing. The bifidobacterium, especially the bifidobacterium infidus, actually increases the serotonin precursor of tryptophan. Tryptophan turns to serotonin like 5-HTP does. Serotonin is the feel-good hormone, so if you feel good, you sleep much more deeply, and that's detoxing your colon as you go. Um, another time, there, there was a study, I remember reading about it somewhere, it, it normalized, the bifidobacterium normalized your immune system response, and it reversed uh, negative behavioral effects, restored some of your, I think it was uh, GABA, gamma aminobutyric acid. Which that that's the one. If you have anxiety, you probably have a GABA or a dopamine deficiency. So the bifidobacterium helps with that, but the lactobacillus helps a lot too, and it helps these microbes. Helps things like uh, the hypothalamus, the pituitary, and the adrenal axis. So it goes from brain all the way to the adrenals and back. And just by throwing in good probiotics over and over again, it does that. That's uh, that's pretty interesting that it would do that. So most of the research says that a gut imbalance in many cases contributes to psychiatric disorders with patients that have bowel disorders. So gut, 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 and that has everything to do with hair, skin, and nails too. Very, very interesting. Whoever thought probiotics could make you pretty? Well, my microbiome likes your microbiome, so <laughs> they must mine must know, know beauty when they see it. <laughs> I love that. Okay, and then uh, I, we also wanted to mention a very special lady that we have a lot of very special ladies, but this one was very special this week because they sent us a card, and uh, we were pretty excited about it because this poor lady, uh, we really worried about her, and Dr. Lewis and her wrote back and forth. Um, her name is Kimberly, and um, they live in Tennessee. In Tennessee, and um, she had MRSA. Um, it was on her face, and um, was having a hard time getting it gone. I mean, she was scared, which you you know that's that's kind of a bad bug to have that you can't yeah. hardly get rid of. And through some of the treatments here that Dr. Lewis suggested to her, which I think was like Laura Seaton. And olive leaf and... Uh, Colloidal silver. Yeah, we have one called Argentin that's super strong. She yep. started taking them, and we thought, well, we haven't heard from her in a few weeks. And Dr. Lewis just ironically sent her an email and said, you know, how are you doing? Well, that next day, we got the most beautiful card, which makes us... This is the reason we do what we do. Um, she wrote to us, and um, the card said, blessed are the givers, and grateful are the receivers. And um, that just pretty much summed up the reason we we do this. You know, um, <laughs> I mean, there's no words after after reading that. And it's like, you guys are the reason that we are here to start with. We're very grateful for each and every one of you. We're very grateful that you guys listen to us. You ask questions. Uh, we love educating you. We try to learn more because of you. And uh, we are just thrilled to know that we've made someone's life better. And, and, you know, that's been a lesson. We've got a couple of new young ladies here that we're very excited about that's going to give y'all very good service. And I told one of them who's a little bit shy, I said, honey, you need to give out what you think you don't have. And when I don't feel appreciated, I write thank you notes. So Kim in uh, Antioch, Tennessee, just, oh, my God, I just love her. But she made me cry years ago, writing me a sweet letter about our son. And we don't even treat this stuff. We just throw throw in lots of nutrients and ask God to bless it. Just like for the sleep, you throw in melatonin, you throw in 5-HTP, you throw in best rest formula, you finally find what you need. And the ones that say thank you, 
Janet and I say, no, thank you. You make our day. You give us encouragement to uh, keep going. And it's just absolutely incredible the people that are getting better and better and better because they put it, put in the nutrients, they put in the positive expectations, and put in the faith and the time. So thank you. They do the work because uh, it is a ministry for us. And without you guys uh, interacting with us and telling us what's happening, you know, we have no way to know if you got better or not. So we really do appreciate all the positive feedback. And um, it's made me prettier today. So I think we've we've uh, concluded this show with beauty. And if you have questions, please uh, ask us on Shooting Straight with Dr. Lewis on Facebook. You can be asked to be added to that closed Facebook group. He does uh, answer questions, and it's pretty entertaining sometimes. And um, also, I was told to put on a filter today. <laughs> there is a health survey on our website that if you're having trouble and don't know where to start, go to greenwisdomhealth.com, fill out our health survey. Uh, we can help you figure out which lab panel is best for you. With what we've mentioned today, we're recommending the comprehensive panel. And I'm going with women's hormones on this one because, you know, women are always concerned about how they look. Men just always seem to look better the older they get. So, you know, for, this for the women today. So <laughs> hope you guys enjoyed the show. And we'll be back here next time with another exciting show. Have a blessed week. Once again, our show has come to an end, but your hope and your health is only beginning. If you or a loved one are in need of a different outcome and are waiting for a brighter future, take the first step and go to our website and fill out the health survey. Please don't keep us a secret. If you know someone that could benefit from this podcast, please share this show with your friends and family. You're only one step away from a life worth living.